four years of pre-med in college, four years of med school, five years of orthopedic surgery residency, and then one year of a spine surgery fellowship. That's 14 years of education and training to become an orthopedic spine surgeon. I'm gonna give you my story right after this. So many of you guys have requested uh, my journey on how I became an orthopedic spine surgeon all the way from, I guess, right after high school. So I'm gonna give you guys the steps and the educational journey and the training journey that I took to get to this point. It's a long one, uh, but it's definitely worth it. And hopefully this information can be used by some of you to inspire you on your journey or to plan ahead. If you are planning on becoming a physician or have any interest in becoming an orthopedic surgeon as well. The journey really starts off. The first step is really deciding that you want to become a physician. It's a pretty big commitment. Lots of students I know grapple with this question, you know, should I become a doctor, should I not? And that's a personal decision that everyone has to make. How I made that decision was I actually decided pretty early on when I was in high school that I wanted to become a doctor. And there was lots of factors for this. One, I had a family pediatrician who was amazing to us and he was a role model to me. That was my early experience with a physician. The second thing was when I grew up, I grew up in a pretty affluent community. There were times growing up that my parents had some economic hardships. And so sometimes I would go to my friend's homes in high school and their homes were really nice and their parents drove really nice cars. And I remember asking uh, my friends what your parents did and a lot of them were physicians. And I would ask them about their careers and what they did and they would tell me about the surgeries that they were gonna do the next day. But that was pretty impactful for me back then that being a doctor seemed to offer a very bright future and also this awesome career of helping people. And so I decided really early on in, in high school that I wanted to be a physician, made that decision, made the jump, and I actually applied to what they call these combined BAMD programs where you can actually get into medical school in high school. And so one of the programs that I applied to was my dream program was Northwestern. They had this program called the Honors Program in Medical Education, the HPME program. It's a seven year combined program. And uh, I also applied to a bunch of other schools. I actually got into Stanford, a bunch of other Ivy League schools like Cornell and UPenn. But since I had already made the decision that I wanted to be a physician, it was a no brainer for me. I remember just praying that I could get into this program and I actually interviewed, I actually flew to Chicago from LA where I grew up when I was 17 to interview at the medical school. They were asking me questions like, why do you wanna be a doctor at the age of 17? And it was pretty intimidating and pretty intense. Luckily enough, I got into this program. I was, I remember the day I got the envelope. I remember uh, my friends were picking me up to go to the beach and I was like screaming out and running out the door with this envelope saying, I got in, I got in. Uh, it was one of, the, one of the most memorable days of my life. So um, that's how it started. I knew I wanted to be a physician in high school. And I jumped right in. Step two, once you decide you wanna become a physician, then the journey starts academically. And this typically starts for most aspiring doctors it, as a pre-medical student in college. And in pre-med, as a pre-med, there's certain basic uh, courses that a pre-med student needs to take. They are, and I may be missing some, it's been a long time, but physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, uh, I think there's some math courses, and this video is not meant to be a primer on a how-to pre-med. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a synopsis of my journey. If you want good information on all the specific details about how to master pre-med and how to just do well as a pre-med student, I recommend checking out Kevin Jubal's channel. Uh, he's actually one of my friends uh, here on YouTube. He has great information about all the technical things you need to become, fill all those requirements as a pre-med student. But I still very saliently remember some of these courses like organic chemistry, where you're pushing around electrons and physics. And these were tough courses. I remember at Northwestern, it was a lot of smart kids that were coming in, a lot of them were valedictorians of their high school, and I felt I had to study pretty hard. I was always studying. I remember physics, you, it was just like repetition of these like 
problems like elevator gravity problems. One night I was studying so many of these like elevator problems that one night I woke up in a cold sweat because I had dreamt that I had, one of these elevators had failed and I had uh, crashed and died. And so uh, that was one memory. And also organic chemistry, you're pushing it around all these electrons. And I, I think the general theme of pre-med, if I really remember back then, is I always wondered what the heck does this have to do with being a doctor? And it doesn't. Uh, to be honest, and uh, I'm not using organic chemistry now as an orthopedic spine surgeon, but it is kind of one of the, a lot of these hoops that you have to jump to, to get to becoming a doctor. And becoming a doctor, you really have to train yourself to become a scientist. And so these are all these courses that are mandated and required of you to kind of master before they let you into medical school. As a pre-med, I definitely utilize very creative ways to try to motivate myself. I remember watching Grey's Anatomy a lot and that would motivate me. I'd be like, wow, that looks so exciting. That looks so incredible to be able to uh, be Dr. McDreamy and operate on brains. Oh my gosh, I need to study harder. So this is a silly way of motivating myself, but it worked. And if you haven't uh, checked out my reaction video to Grey's Anatomy, I do talk about this somewhat in that video. So make sure you check that video out. And so whatever you can to motivate yourself as a pre-med, because what you're gonna actually be doing as a doctor is not organic chemistry. My program, I actually did not have to take the MCAT. So it was this combined program that you got into high school and you did not have to take the MCAT. So I was very lucky, but I know a lot of my pre-med friends had to take the MCAT and that's a whole nother process. Again, I'm gonna to defer to Kevin Jubal's channel on tips for the MCAT. Step three is medical school. And so you get into medical school as a pre-med, you're excited, you're happy, what to expect in medical school. I went to Northwestern Medical School in Chicago, Illinois. It was an awesome experience. They have an incredible uh, medical school there. And when I think back to medical school, it was very intense again, kind of like pre-med, but it was even worse. I remember getting slapped in the face like pretty hard during my first exam. I remember studying like a dog for it. I studied endlessly. It was like an anatomy test. And I think I studied like three weeks straight. I didn't leave my apartment. I said, I'm gonna ace this. I'm gonna get 100%. I'm gonna just ace this test. And I, and I felt okay about the exam. I remember getting the result back and I was like dead average. I was like 50th percentile. It wasn't even like a C. It was like 50th percentile. And I remember just feeling slapped in the face and being like, wow, I am not even smart here. And medical school can be challenging like that because everyone in your class is kind of at the top of their the cream of the crop of whatever college they came from. Uh, and I remember that was the stark difference from undergrad to med school. And medical school is really divided into two phases. It's two years of your preclinicals where you're studying anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, all the book work. The buildup is up to this insane test called the USMLE Step 1. And that is a test that every medical student kind of dreads, I believe. And when I took it, it was, it was a big deal, and I think it still is. And why that test was such a big deal was it really determined what medical specialties maybe that you were gonna be competitive for. And so the other challenge in medical school is you're always trying to figure out what specialty you wanna do one day. And I may do a video in the future on how to best choose your medical specialty, but you're trying to figure out what specialty you wanna, but you also have this board exam bearing down on you the first two years where you know you have to do really well if you wanna do a competitive specialty like plastic surgery, orthopedics, dermatology. Some of these, other spe some of these specialties are much harder to get into than, than other specialties and it's well known in medical school. So that was what the first two years were consumed by. And I remember that a 12 to 14 hour study session was not atypical. So I would just, I remember certain things I was thinking about, like what, what are the best study spots in med school? I would go to the law school, I would go to the business school, I'd find out places where I can kind of hide for like 12 hours at a time and just study nonstop. And it was a balancing act because you didn't want to burn out. So you had to figure out how to decompress. But medical school is a lot of studying, first two years, then your third and fourth year are what they call your clinical years where you're rotating and you're going around and you're doing rotations in different uh, medical specialties. So you have an internal medicine rotation for three months where you're on the wards working with an internal medicine doctor. So the clinical years are different from the first two years dramatically. The clinical years are where you really get graded on whether you're a team player, kind of like your social skills, your communication skills, how you present 
versus the first two years are more like book work and whether you can wrote memorize and spit things out on a paper and answer and take tests, right? The first years. Now the third year, you still have to take tests, but a lot of it has to do with how you perform, taking care of patients and being part of the team. It's med school really has like some really key memorable moments. When you first start, you have your white coat ceremony. Everyone remembers their white coat ceremony where you put on your first white coat, it's a short white coat, and you have to take the Hippocratic Oath and and that's a very memorable day. And then at the end of kind of the conclusion of medical school in your fourth year, you're applying for residency. So you're out there and I wanted to do orthopedic surgery, which I you know, grew to love as a third year medical student. It was very competitive and uh, I remember being pretty stressed out during the application process, wondering if I could match into orthopedic surgery. So the match is this insane process. If you're familiar with it, you, you know what it's all about. But basically, there's only a certain amount of residency spots for a certain specialty, and there may be more applicants than there are spots. And so they have this crazy process where you go and interview, and then you submit a list saying, I want to go to this as my first choice, this program as my first choice, this program as my second choice, and so on and so forth. The programs also rank you, and then there's a computer algorithm that puts everything together, and then you are handed an envelope on the in your fourth year medical school during match day. It's like this uh, <laughs> doomsday almost where you pick this envelope and you open it up and the computer algorithm has matched you up with a certain program based on your preferences and their preferences and that's where you're going for five years. You don't have a say about it and to be honest for me it was like one of the worst days of my life. Uh, ultimately everything happens for a reason but for me I didn't want to end up in the East Coast where that's where I am now, I'm in Long Island. I actually grew up in Los Angeles. I was dreaming of going back to Los Angeles and I had put all these LA orthopedic programs at the top of my list, didn't happen. It, it was fate, it was meant to be. I matched in the East Coast, <laughs> opposite of where I wanted to go. I ended up matching uh, at Rutgers in New Jersey where I uh, went on to do orthopedic surgery residency. Step four is orthopedic surgery residency. Residency is a pretty tough time. Residency for orthopedics is five years long. And I gotta tell you, it's, it's a grind. And now, educationally, how is it structured? So the first year, you do six months of what they call intern year of general surgery. So you are on the general surgery service and you learn uh, about how to take care of general surgery patients, which are not orthopedics. They, they don't have broken bones or anything like that. They choose like appendicitis or uh, they have cholecystitis or like gallbladder problems and then you're working them up in the ER or you're doing other uh, services like liver transplant or trauma and you're learning from general surgery and you're learning principles, just general principles about surgery, about how to suture, how to uh, work up a surgical patient, what you need to do on, for a pre-op and you're on the floor, you're on the wards a lot doing that. After you complete the general surgery aspect of intern year, then you move on to orthopedics and educationally what they do is they split it up and you do different rotations on various orthopedic services. So this could be uh, pediatric orthopedics, it could be orthopedic oncology, hand, foot and ankle, it could be trauma. And of course, the absolute best subspecialty out of all of them was orthopedic spine surgery. And so, so residency is a process where you're not, you are no longer learning through books, right? So everything up to this point, medical school, pre-med, you're buried in books, you're learning a lot of books. Now in third year medical school, you start to get a taste of the hospital and working with patients. Residency, it's all learning by patients and actual surgeries. And as a surgery resident, your goal is to learn how to do surgery. You spend more of your time in the OR as a fourth and fifth year at most programs, but it's called graduated responsibility. So you, in the first couple years, you might be learning more of what happens on the floor, what happens on the emergency room. So a resident will go see orthopedic consults in the emergency room. And I remember that was a crazy time where I did residency as a level one trauma center. So it was patients who had motor vehicle accidents, um, you know, breaking their bones from getting shot. And I would go to the ER and I would splint them. I would get x-rays, I would work them up. I would stabilize them and get them ready if they needed for surgery. And so that you were doing that as a PGY2 or a second year resident. And then as you moved on, you got more and more time in the operating room, operating more and more independently. And that's how you learned in residency now. So it was completely different from anything else I'd done before. Instead of learning from a book, you're learning 
to use your hands, learn techniques. You read about these cases the night before um, and try to memorize the steps before you actually do the surgery. Now, the other side of residency is that it's a very time consuming and mentally grueling process. There are work hour restrictions now that are put on residents where they can't work more than 80 hours, but some a week, 80 hours a week, uh, but this is averaged over four weeks. So sometimes there would be weeks where you would be working way more than 80 hours a week. Sometimes you'd be in the hospital for 24 hours at a time. And I remember just so many nights where I felt when I would take a nap in the hospital so that I wouldn't be unsafe when I was driving home. Overall, it's a lot of, lot of expectations on you as a resident. And it's a lot of time away from family. There was a lot of times where you had holidays or weekends, you were in the hospital working and covering the orthopedic service. So it was very, um, I would have to say that was one of the most challenging times of my life. A, but you learn a ton, you learn a tremendous amount, you're learning how to become a surgeon through as a five year process. Lots of good memories as well uh, from those five years. All right guys, almost at the end, step five is Fellowship, so orthopedic spine surgery fellowships. I did mine at Harvard Med School at Beth Israel Deaconess uh, Hospital there, and this was honestly one of the best years of my life. It was such an amazing experience. Like up until that point, you're really being treated almost like you have superiors, and then you're below your superior. And when you're a fellow, uh, you're considered more of a colleague. And so and I remember my attendings at Harvard. They would tell me. You know, Dan, just call me Andrew, just call me Umesh. And I, I couldn't do it, actually. So the whole year, I would not call them by their first name. It was just too weird to me. I kept calling them Dr. White, Dr. Metcar, up until the day I was in attending. And so um, this was inc just an incredible year, though, because this is the year that you're really being taught the nuances of spine surgery, how to hold instruments a certain way, little techniques in every single surgery. And you're really invested in trying to master all these surgeries that you're gonna be doing the rest of your career. And I was lucky, my fellowship was amazing. They really took me under their wing. I truly believe that my skills as a spine surgeon today, I owe them all to my fellowship. So that was a truly amazing experience to really put the polishing, finishing touches on becoming a surgeon. And it was a one year process. And then, voila, we have orthopedic spine surgeon, Dr. Daniel Troy here in Long Island, New York, produced through those, um, we said, 14 years of training, right? So it was a long process. I kind of glazed over a lot of the details. I think that in the future, I will be doing future videos on uh, more detailed videos on each phase of training. If you guys are interested, make sure you leave a comment down below on what topic you'd like me to do a video on next. This was a commonly requested one, so I went ahead and did it. So I wanna give one piece of advice to you if you are thinking about becoming a physician and on, or, or maybe you're on this journey, is that really medical training is a ton of delayed gratification. It's a long process. It's a ridiculously long process as you've seen in this video. And I just kinda of glazed over everything. And so if you're in this journey, you really have to take a forward posture and think forward to the final end goal to get yourself through this. Look, physics, organic chemistry, they're not fun in college. But if you have to, you have to imagine yourself as a physician one day to get yourself through that. And same thing goes in residency or in med school. In med school, you're not gonna be actually doing surgery, right? You're gonna be watching a lot of the times and observing, and it's gonna be frustrating. You're gonna feel impatient. Like, I didn't come to med school for this, but you really have to always imagine yourself. What if I were that surgeon doing that surgery? How would that feel? And by taking that forward posture, that looking, having perspective, that's what's gonna get you through to becoming uh, a physician or a surgeon, or whatever your end goal is. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure you comment down below on any other topics you guys would like to see in the future. Also, it would really help if you could like and subscribe to my channel uh, so you don't miss out on future videos. Also, if you wanna see more on life as a spine surgeon, I did a video vlog of a day in the OR, which I'm gonna put the link right here, guys. Uh, hope you guys have a great day and thanks for watching.